Hello and welcome to Tonalist Paintings by M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and um, the painting we are doing today is the full-size version of Near the Creek, and the size is 8 by 10. We did the study back on Wednesday. Today is um, Saturday, and uh, that would be January 9th. Okay, so um, this painting was painted last year, probably uh, in July is when I was finished it. Uh, actually, I you know I work in at least three stages now, um, where and it's generally four and sometimes five actually now. But first stage is a drawing stage, and that's what you see going on here. Um, second stage is what I usually term as first color. Um, third stage is a finish up stage and um, that's currently what I've been doing in my studio at present. I'm working my way uh, through finishing you know, quite a lot of pieces, um, actually 18 to be precise, but uh, back when I did uh, Near the Creek I probably had a series of 14 going or so. and. Um, I guess what I was going to talk a little bit about today on the blog is this finishing process. You'll see that uh, when we get a little further along in this video and I get to the second color stage that basically, you know, I did do some dry brushing and a little bit of glazing, but a lot of it was really just going in with a smaller brush and kind of mm, filling in things I missed. and. Um, back in 2014 here is about when I started using my uh, 5x7 study as the reference for the finishing stage of the painting and I think that's one of the smartest things I ever did because um, it's really important to put that photograph aside um, regardless of how nice it might be the painting has to have um, quality as a painting and uh, I'm conditioned to always look over, you know, so having that study there is it's helpful for me, even if I'm deviating from the study, even if I'm not really um, following it. And, you know, that's a phenomenon I've noticed in paintings more and more, the more that I do this. Every painting has its own life and its own existence, and you as the uh, creator have a lot of say, but you don't have all the say, you know. You can have a painting and it's not going totally well, but if you, if you had all the say, you could turn it around very easily um, and just see everything that was wrong and fix it or uh, wisely decide to bail on something that wasn't going to uh, work out anyway. But it's been my experience that um, you pretty much there are things you can see and things you can fix, but uh, every painting is such a reflection of the artist that sometimes there's no escaping that. There's certain things that you'll do that'll just be part of who you are. And, uh, you know, I, I, for me, it, it, a lot of times it shows up in these uh, the shapes of my trees. I could, I could pick one of my paintings out of, you know, hundreds on a wall or thousands even you know just by the shapes of the trees I know which is interesting because you know we're uh, all using the same trees to paint from so um, but that's just an example and you know at, at a certain point I um, talking about that third or sometimes fourth finishing stage I was just going in with a smaller brush and trying to tidy things up and trying not to overwork it um, but didn't always succeed in that regard and uh, um, this painting uh, like I said with the study is maybe more detailed than I'd approach it these days but um, compared to the first time that I painted this motif which had a very very tight drawing that I actually stuck very close to based on this photograph I took and it's a nice enough painting, but I s always saw that tightness as being a bit of a liability for that painting, in spite of the fact that people really liked it. My wife really likes it, and uh, you know. Anyway, um, 
I guess we're uh, gonna talk a little bit about my day in the studio this week. We're into the uh, my first week of actual solid painting, and like I said, I have this box with uh, you know about 18 motifs that I've completely done the five by seven studies, and uh, I've done the first and second uh, color pass. Uh, they're the first drawing stage and color pass for each one of these, and so they're all lined up waiting for me to finish them up and uh, that's such a balancing act you know I, um, I don't want to over dramatize it but uh, it's easy to go too far and uh, a lot of my new approach has been instead of um, I always try with that first color to say everything that I can say wet and wet and the only things that are left unstated are things that I know I have to do with the dry pigment over pigment that's also been dried a while and that's a certain dry brush techniques and of course glazing um, and I tend to jump in and do the glazing first thing off and uh, you know if we're talking about a painting like uh, near the creek here I don't think I even did any glazing on this one to be honest um, I don't think we're still just finishing up the first color stage in the video but um, it will be able to tell pretty soon if I went in and did any glazing. A lot of times I might just do a little yellow, you know. I like to glaze with this uh, transparent earth yellow from Gildan. And uh, actually I'll season it with just a little bit of burnt sienna because it has a tendency to go a little green. But what I like about it is it has this nice warming quality um, which uh, helps bring everything into even greater tonal, tonal harmony. And um, yeah, speaking of tonal harmony, I was uh, thinking about that today and how, how you know, I define myself as a toneless painter and what that actually means compared to someone who might not, even though in a lot of ways our working processes might not be so different. A lot of what would constitute being a tonalist is your approach to color and color harmony from the inception of the uh, color work but also um, the thing that really seals the deal is this approach to finishing like doing things like glazing that automatically takes you out of the realm of what's called direct painting and you're fully in the indirect camp and once you're in the indirect camp you know you're not painting in that real impressionist manner. Although, uh, you know, a lot of artists that are called impressionists were known to work on. Like Monet, he didn't do those giant lily paintings all in one go. Uh, he was an old guy and he wasn't in great shape. He was working on them at the same time of day, every day, over quite a period of time. And how much dry brushing went on, we don't really know. Uh, because after the fact, it's sometimes quite hard to tell. Anyway, uh, that's it for Saturday, the January 9th, and uh, Near the Creek, thanks for joining us today. And uh, come back Wednesday, we're going to dig up another motif and uh, do the study. And, uh, um, you know, it'll all be really groovy and really good. So, again, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you Wednesday. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.